everybody welcome back to the channel thank you for tuning in uh, this week's video is a video I'm gonna be honest I was not expecting to do now for those of you that don't know I live in the LA area and one of the cool things about living in LA is we get these kind of special events and things that a lot of people don't get in other parts of the country and that's exactly what's happening here I've been invited by Nissan to this special event to take a look at the new 400Z in person. Now I know what you might be thinking. You know, you've seen pictures of the yellow one and you've seen videos of it. Really, how much more can I show you that you haven't already seen? Well, I have been promised by Nissan that this is a version of the 400Z that nobody's seen yet. Pretty much what happened was this car was supposed to be debuted at the New York Auto Show but because of COVID, that event was canceled. So their plan is to now take this car around the country and let people like me come and see it, you know, do some video for you guys and talk about it. And that way, that's how it's gonna get introduced to the world. So that's gonna be kind of cool. I'm gonna see a version of the 400Z that nobody's seen yet. Now they haven't exactly told me what's different about the car, just that it's different. Now I don't know if that means that they're finally moved beyond the concept phase. I'm gonna see the official road version or if there's been a complete change of the car, or I don't know. So that's gonna be kind of the exciting part. Now, before I get there, you know, maybe I should talk a little about my initial impressions of the 400Z, because we've all seen it, we've been following it, reading up on it, and hoping for the best. So my initial impressions of the 400Z as I've seen it so far is, meh. Like, I've gotta be honest, I'm really happy with the fact that they went for the retro look. It reminds me of the 400, or the, not the 400Z, the 240Z I built back in the day, back with an L28 engine and the double Weber carburetor. So, I do have some memories with that car. So just like the Camaro and the Mustang, it's kinda nice to see they're embracing kinda that retro look. But there's one thing glaringly about the 400Z as I've seen it that I really don't like, and that is the front grille. When you take a look at the front grille, it's just this big black piece that looks like just an open fish mouth, and I don't like it. Now, if they truly followed the look of the 240 to the 280Z, they could have run some sort of bumper around that, and it would have broken up that big gaping hole, and it'd look a lot better. So here's hoping that when I go take a look at this new 400Z, that it'll be a better looking car and they fix that area. Now that being said, there's something really exciting about the car. Now apparently the engine that's coming in the 400Z is pretty much a toned down version of the engine that's in this car. Now the VR and the VQ engine kind of both share the same bottom end. It's just different heads and tuning. And of course this one comes with a turbo. Now what I've heard is the engine, the 400Z is gonna kind of be between the GTR engine and the G35 engine, and it's gonna come twin turbo. So I'm hoping that is the truth. In which case then you're ending up with a V6 twin turbocharged engine on a rear wheel drive platform. And of course we've all seen the pictures and we're hoping it's true that the 400Z comes with a true manual transmission. So those are my initial impressions of the car. Now, I don't know about the size, looking at the pictures, it looks like it might be smaller than the R35, and I'm hoping it is, because that's one thing I don't like about the R35, is it's just a really big car. I would really like to see a small, lightweight, nimble car with a decent power plant that's rear wheel drive and a stick. But I don't know yet, I'll wait until I see the one at the event. Now, this also being said, this is a small event, but it sounds like it's a bunch of Nissan guys that are being invited. So if there's any other cars there of interest, of course, I'll get some footage of that too, just to kind of show what was there. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now, and I'll pick up with you when I finally get to see the 400Z in person. Okay, here we are at the event, and pretty much exactly as I expected, there's a fair amount of Nissan guys here and one BMW Supra guy who must have gotten lost and got an invite. But anyway, so it's really exciting to see is first, as soon as I got here, uh, my favorite version of the Skyline right here is the Hakasuka Skyline. Once they got the Hakasuka inside the building, I got a chance to walk around it. And I've still got to say that this is the, my favorite of the Skyline line. I know the R34 is king, but for me, the Hakasuka is just a better looking car. And then if you can drop an RB26 in there, it's just, in my opinion, the best of the Skyline. I love the way it's got those square tail lights in the back and it's got the stock fender flares and that really mean front end. I mean, to me, this just kind of looks like a 1970s Japanese NASCAR and I absolutely love the way this car looks. 
I got a chance to see the interior of this car, which was nice because this was actually the first one I've seen that was pretty darn close to stock. Most Hakusukas I've seen have some sort of modifications in there, whether it be some sort of updated stereo or extra gauges. And it looks like the owner of this car kept it pretty darn close to stock, so you can kind of get a feel of what it might be like to actually experience driving this car. Next I saw this primo looking 2AZ, which is great because it's kind of a throwback to the heritage that is the Z car. Now, when the Z car was released, it was a 240 to 280Z, and they released the ZX line, which is supposed to be a little bit extra. And as you can see, that's what they did. You know, there's a little bit more of the molded plastic and the molded bumpers. The interior on this car also was a little bit more updated with some more molded plastics and kind of more of what we're used to seeing on a Japanese car. The guy who owned this car took great care of it or did a great job restoring it because I'm so used to seeing these cars with oxidized paint and rust and interiors that are falling apart and this looks like it just came off the showroom floor. <laughs> okay, I know what you're thinking. You're seeing this car and you're thinking, why am I looking at this car? It's just a station wagon, a four-door station wagon. But as you're looking at this car, I'm going to show you why I'm taking a look at this car because it's something I've never seen before. I didn't even know this car existed and you're about to see it right now, right there. What do you know? Have you, would you have expected this? This is a Skyline. I did not know that Skylines came in four door station wagons. This is an R31 Nissan Skyline station wagon. <laughs> this, I, this was just a shocker to me. This blew my mind. Like I, I didn't know these existed. And the funny thing is too, we look right here. It's also turbocharged. Can you believe this? This is a four door station wagon, Nissan Skyline turbo engine car. I, I know it's not exciting to you guys. It's just a station wagon. But to me, this is super exciting because one, I didn't know it existed. And I just think this is absolutely awesome. Moving back inside, of course, I had to go take a look at the car that started it all for the Z cars. There was a primo looking 240Z. And I actually built one of these back in the day. I actually dropped in an L28 engine, which I thought, hey, you know, I'm getting a bigger engine. You got the Weber double carburetors, and I thought that was cool. This guy took it one step further, and when he popped the hood, and we see <laughs> a SR20 engine dropped into a 240Z. And it was definitely a fun car to see, especially because this is the car that led us down the road that inevitably is going to bring us to the 400Z. And of course, once I'm finished looking at the 240Z, they did something very smart. They lined up all these generations of Z cars. So you can walk through and see where you started with the 240Z, and then they show the 280, and then they move into the ZX line, and then of course you got the 300Z that we've all seen, and of course the cars that are out there that everybody's seen on the road a hundred times. We do get to the 350Z and of course the 370Z. So it feels like this was a nice lead up into the next room where we're finally gonna see the 400Z. Okay, I know you're all probably getting a little frustrated and impatient. I promised you a view of this new Nissan 400Z that no one's seen before and I've showed you all these other cars. So don't worry, I won't torture you anymore. Here it comes, the new 400Z. I mean, take a look at this car. I've got to admit, when I came into this event, I had a solid opinion of the car of just meh. And I've got to tell you right now, my opinion has just changed 100%. Seeing this car in person, this is a phenomenal looking car. I literally walked into this room and I had to stop walking for a second. Now, no, my jaw didn't hit the ground or anything dramatic like that, but I literally had to stop for a second to take in this car because I was not expecting how good this car looks in person. And I don't even know if my camera is going to do it justice. Until you see this car in person, you don't know. I mean, especially for someone like me who built a 240Z, this feels like the, the 240Z back from the dead, back on the road. This is just a great looking car on the surface. And check out that blue. Oh my God. I've seen blues I've liked on cars, like I like the blue that's on the R35 GTR. Um, some of the new Corvettes have got a great looking blue, but my God, this is no joke, the best blue I've seen on any car, period. And like I said, I'm afraid that my camera isn't going to do it justice because this has got to be at least a two-stage paint job because when you look at it, it's kind of this nice shiny blue, but when you look at the sharp edges of the car, when the light hits them, they almost take like this purplish sheen. 
and this was a color they designed specifically for the 400Z and it's called Syrian Blue. But like I said, uh, let's start walking around the car and let's start addressing some of the specifics because uh, I'm actually excited about this car now and I haven't even driven it. So uh, let's start talking about some of the specifics. I want to start right where I had the most major issue with the car when I saw the pictures online and that was the front grille. I did say that I didn't like this big fish mouth opening of the grille and I think Nissan fixed it. I, I actually didn't expect this, but they were very smart. So if you take a look at the top part of the grille, they did kind of these chrome outline rings inside the openings of the grille on the top half and the bottom half is just black. And now this really helps because like I said, when it is all black, it's just this kind of big fish mouth. But by putting that little bit of chrome in there, it breaks it up so it doesn't seem as big. Now let's take a look at the headlights. These headlights are really, really cool. Uh, when you get a close look at them, I mean, they're super bright HIDs but they kind of get a little bit of a design on the inside where you have like the running lights that kind of outline the headlight. I really like the way this looks. So I'm very happy that they did this. Now, when you, like I said, when you saw the 240Z that I showed earlier, they just have those big round eyeballs. It still kind of looks like it harkens back to that, but they gave it the new modern twist. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of the car. Here also again, I mean, you can almost do a cardboard cutout of the 240Z and put it right over this. This really does feel like the 240 to 280Z and I absolutely love that. This car looks and just feels a lot more lighter and more nimble than the 250 and the 270Z, which I've driven and to me they just feel heavy and they feel sluggish. I don't think you're going to get that from this car. I think this is going to be a great light and nimble car that is going to be a great car to drive. Just looking at it, like I said, it, just, it looks light, it looks fun. They did a great job designing the exterior of this car. Taking a look at the rear of the car, this was also another problem that I had with the car. I really didn't like the way the taillights looked in the pictures. Seeing them in person, I don't know if these are changed because like I said, this is the newest version of the car, but I like what they did. So you have the brake lights that kind of have this big strip across the back, but at least now you can see through it. It's not tinted, so it doesn't just look like this random black bar. And of course, when you turn the taillights on, I've never seen this before. This is kind of cool. So it's got raised plastic and the light from the taillights actually moves through the top part of that plastic so it almost looks like the taillights are hovering off the back of the car. I think this is an absolutely smart design. I think this looks really, really good and I hope more cars kind of start using this style of headlight. It gets away, away from that boring kind of, you know, reflector with the light behind it look. One last little thing about the exterior and I know this is something that probably not a lot of people care about but for me I thought this was just great that they didn't forget to do this. Right here on the B pillar it's got the Z logo. Now if you take a look at the 240, the 280 they all have this Z logo in the same spot. Now granted in the 240, the 280 the Z logo was kind of a vent uh, so you can get air in and out of the cabin. This one of course is sealed because nowadays we have great heaters and air conditioners in these cars but I just love the fact that this little detail is here and they didn't ignore it. Looking here at the interior of the car, once again, I gotta say they were very, very smart with the design. And in the interior of this car, they kind of harken back to not only the 240, the 280Z, you can see they gave some nods to the 350, the 370Z as well, especially when you take a look at the interior door handles. Those are just right out of the 350 and the 370Z. So they didn't ignore those iterations of the Z car. It's all part of the Z family. Now, of course, you have the steering wheel nice and center. It looks like the steering wheel is kind of in the 2017 and up GTRs, which it very well might be. Nissan likes to use parts out of the bin on their cars, and I've got no complaint with that. Of course, you have a good infotainment center. It looks like it's a big one. I think it's about a 17 inch. If you're into that, for me, I'm not as big on that. For me, I'm all about the driving, but some people like that. And then, of course, the one thing that we were all looking for, that we all demanded, and it's here, a stick. That's right, this is a manual transmission, which means we get that sensation again. No more are we relying on the DCTs or the automatic transmissions. We actually have a six gate transmission that we can slam through the gears, going through canyons. This is gonna be particularly useful too if anyone tries to turn this into a drift car, which I'm sure is gonna happen. So I'm very happy to see that Nissan's bringing back the manual transmission. Now, of course, looking at the seats, <laughs> I do think they look like comfortable seats. I think it's a little too much blue. I would definitely not get this car specced with a blue interior. I just think it's overkill. I don't like that. But the seats do look comfortable and I kind of had to laugh 
When you take a look at the bottom of these seats, they're exactly the same as the bottom of the seats that are on my, three, or my R35 GTR. So it makes me wonder if they do release a Nismo edition of this car, and let's be honest, give it a couple years, they're gonna release a Nismo edition of this car. If we're gonna get the same Recaro seats that are in the R35 GTR, I think that would just be a great move. But all in all, I do like the interior of this car. It, it's not overly modern and it's not overly retro. It's a great balance. I just don't like all this blue. So I don't know what options they're gonna have in the future. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get a red interior, which <laughs> a red interior on a blue car, ugh, don't think I'd go that route, but I think it'd look good in black. Also with the seats, I forgot to mention, the outside of course is leather, but the interior part of the seat is Alcantara. So at least it'll be able to breathe, it'll give you some good grip, and you're not gonna sweat too much in these seats. All in all, like I said, I think they did a great job on the interior of this car. All right, everyone, so this was the part that I was looking forward to the most when they finally popped the hood and showed us the engine. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, it doesn't matter what a car looks like on the outside, doesn't matter look like what it looks like on the inside, it all comes down to the engine. The engine is the heart and soul of the car. And in this, Nissan did not disappoint. They gave us a three liter V6 twin turbocharged engine with 24 valves that's made almost completely of aluminum. That's right, it's aluminum alloy on the block and aluminum alloy on the heads, which means this engine weighs as least as it possibly can. And of course, twin turbocharged. So happy to see that. We're getting forced air induction. It's not just naturally aspirated. Now apparently they have some sort of optical speed sensor on this engine that gets the turbos to spool up at only 2200 RPM. That's almost no turbo lag. Super excited to see this. Also with the fact that it's turbocharged, that means that there's modifications we can do. We can slap on bigger turbos, bigger intercoolers. All we have to worry about maybe doing is the injectors, fuel pump, and a tune. That means that this car is going to be tuner friendly. I'm super stoked about that. Now with the fact that this car is rear wheel drive, Nissan didn't ignore that either. They're actually giving this car a launch control. So just like in the R35 GTR, the 400Z is getting launch control, which means you don't have to worry about roasting those tires too bad if you're trying to get off the line quick and up to speed. So that was also very, very smart of them. All in all, what I'm seeing on this car, I'm very, very happy with. I think they've done everything right, and this could be the car that saves Nissan. And there it is, the new 400Z. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, I did have some preconceived notions of the car before I went into this. And the question is, did seeing it in person change my opinion of the car? And the answer to that is, oh yeah. Oh hell yeah, I have a different impression of the car. It is a way better car than I expected it to be. Now, if we want to start with the exterior, first of all, it's not a huge car. It is a good sized car. Now, it's not super small like a Miata or super huge like the R35. I think it is a great sized car, and that is absolutely awesome. The only issue I might have is that it seems to sit a little high with about a four finger wheel gap. But let's be honest, with a car like this, there's going to be coilovers, there's going to be drop springs. That's going to be an easy enough issue to fix. Of course, I'm super happy to see that it does in fact have the twin turbocharged V6, which means you have a lot of power potential. Knowing that it's pretty much the same bottom end that's in this car, you know that we're gonna be able to up the boost, change out some of the fuel systems. There's gonna be a lot of aftermarket support for this car to get the most power out of it you can. And then of course, when we take a look at the interior. Now, granted the interiors I saw, I thought was just a little overkill on blue but obviously there's gonna be other interior options out there which will probably look a lot better. Of course, it has a good size infotainment system if you're into that. I love the fact that it still has the three gauges in the dash, that's a real kind of callback to the Z Heritage. And of course, we have to talk about the one thing that we were all hoping to see and we did see it, and that was that manual transmission. I mean, we're in this area where we're seeing the death of the manual transmission because everyone's just used to pushing buttons on their video games. It's kind of nice to see that a company is going to keep the manual transmission alive. That means that we are getting a front engine 
six-speed transmission, rear-wheel drive platform, and this is exactly what we've been needing. In fact, it might actually be the car that saves Nissan. For those of you that don't know, it seems like Nissan's just always on the verge of bankruptcy. This may be the car that saves it. Because, let's be honest, what car out there can really compete with the car in this classification? I mean, what do we have? The BMW Supra? I mean, it's not a Supra, even though everybody who owns one says it is. Nobody who owns one says it's a Supra. It's a BMW Z4 with a different body. I've, I've done a video on this. You can check my channel for it where I talk about why it's a BMW. It's just a cop-out by Toyota. But even that, the Supra doesn't come with a manual. It's an automatic only. Most of the other cars either have automatics or they have DCTs like this car. So we, it's nice to see that we have this car. I mean, this car, you can do anything. I mean, you can do autocross with this car, it looks like. It looks like it's gonna be good for track. I mean, if you wanna drift, if that's still a thing you're even into. I think we're gonna see a lot of potential for this car. I think the sales are gonna be awesome on it. And I think it's really gonna revitalize Nissan as a brand. This was really, they did all the right moves. Now, I do want to talk about, yeah, before I said I didn't like that big opening that I saw online in the front grille. In this version, I don't know if it just wasn't visible in the pictures online or if they changed it, but they used some chrome accents in that front grille. Kind of breaks up the monotony of that big fish mouth opening. I think it looks great. I don't think there's a thing I would change about this car. This is a super exciting car with so much potential that I'm really excited to see what it's gonna do and how people are gonna treat it, what modifications are gonna be for it once it hits the road. So only time will tell. I think this is gonna be a great car. Now, I hope you like this video. If you did, go hit that thumbs up button to let me know. It does help the channel out a lot. If you'd like to see more automotive, particularly GTR content in the future, go and subscribe to my channel. You can now follow me on all forms of social media, which include Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. I'll leave links to all of those in the description down below. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have the JD Archer shop. If you go to jdarcher.bigcartel.com, you can see a limited selection of hats, t-shirts, and hoodies I've designed, and there's two new designs up there. A couple of weeks ago, I did put up the RB26 2 liters is for soda t-shirt. And then just this week, I put up the you will always get what you need from the road t-shirt. Both of those are on the website and they're for sale now. If you have any questions or comments, or you feel there's anything I've missed in this video, go ahead and post in the comment section down below. I will respond to you. I thank you all for watching. And until next time, forget everything else, focus on the finish line.